Alright guys, Coach Ben and BigBenches.com Decided to put this video together for you today This is actually a full bench warm up video for you So we got about 13 minutes of recording here And I'm just kind of taking you through what I do to get ready to bench uh, You can see here what I'm doing is Just going through my core four stretching routine I'll start with some hip flexor stretches there Real important also to warm up your lower body uh, not just your upper body when benching or else you'll end up having a hard time getting your feet out and position on the bench or you'll start cramping because when you bench full body when it's not just an upper body press anymore you're really starting to bench and you're getting your legs involved um, those legs really take a beating so I mean when I'm handling max weight I'm shaking at the legs I need to make sure my lower body is also warmed up as well and then I'm fully stretched out or I get a lot of lower body cramping Especially within the hips trying to get my feet back into position and the hip flexors is generally um, an area I'll cramp up in so you can see in the routine I really take care of the lower body here make sure that gets warmed up what I'm going into now I went through the uh, windshield wipers there just getting some external internal rotation in my legs uh, now I'm going into a, uh, a uh, figure four position here I'm also call uh, the uh, pigeon pose and you can see I'm just walking my hands out here getting a little rotation getting into the QL muscle kind of went from the hip flexors into the glutes into the QL and then this stretch right here is really tapping into my lats as well as my QL I'm kind of going through a swimming motion just trying to bring my chest over to the ground getting all that rotation picking up the rotational fascinet And then I'll go through a few more stretches that I add on to my core four routine here. This is for the lower back. Just kind of getting some rotation through the back there. And the hips. And what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of bringing my leg across. As well as uh, trying to keep my shoulders planted on the ground. Here I'm getting into the glute max. All I do cross the leg over your knee there. And then just push up towards your chest and this is a favorite of mine this is getting into more glute medius uh, adductors here so I have that same position and then I just kind of walk my foot out and then as you can see I drop that other leg over and that's a great stretch when you get that one down alright so that completes the stretching portion of what I do um, don't really get into too many upper body stretches mostly just setting the shoulders into position and doing some activation work warming up um, my upper body is not generally too tight that it affects my benching and I don't want it to be too too loose I just my goal always with my warm-up is to do just enough so that I can stay in good positions while I'm performing the lift so for example in squatting I'm not trying to loosen up so much that I uh, can hit too much depth I just want to hit the depth required by the rules of powerlifting and get back up so I'm not trying to go super ass the grass I don't want to be too loose I want to keep that tightness to me so right here what I did I threw the little cross ball under my glutes I'm just doing some mild fascia release here you see me fishing around for different spots when I find tightness I just kind of breathe into it crossing one leg over just to get a stretch in the glutes and here I'm positioning the roller right onto my hips there and this is a favorite of mine I'm just kinda rotating those hips right over that roller this is something that really helps my cramping issue on the bench see I'm just positioning that roller and just getting that rotation getting into the hip flexors And that's like I said, it'll prevent that cramping you get when you're trying to get your feet back into position. And you can see now I go into my lats here. Hands behind the head. Keeping that roller on my lats and I'm just adding some rotation, getting into the rhomboids. Real good mile fast release for the lats here. All you need is a roller. Roller hits the area very well. 
and I'm kind of right underneath my scapula. I don't really want to be on my scapula. You can find a nice sweet spot right underneath. Just getting that twist in motion. And I'll spend some time here. I'm just showing you one side of the body so this isn't too long of a video. So I'm just working on one side of the video here. Then I'll go into some neck myofascial release. Real important for benching just because your neck's in a very uh, precarious position. Tuck back on the bench there, especially when you get a nice setup. I can get a real tight neck if I don't do this, and uh, from a result of benching, just because your neck's such a, in a craned position. So, real important to take care of the neck, get it done with stretching, or uh, you can do this myofascial release here. This is kind of a combo. I'll pack down tissue. I got that ball into my traps right now and I'll pack down that tissue and then I'll kind of manually grab my head you'll see and I kind of stretch it out myself keeping that ball pinned up on the wall it's important to find a corner of a wall so that you leave your uh, head some space to, to move that way you can get to the traps effectively can't really do this on a flat wall and kind of just get behind the neck then I'll get into some pecs here you can see I'm just finding a good spot to position that ball kind of where you get the insertion of the uh, pec muscles into the shoulder joint kind of finding that tender area there and just spend some time working through that with myofascial release on the pecs they kind of just take my time and fan through the area so if I find a tight spot I'll stay on there for a while but I'm mostly just kind of fanning through the area mostly just getting blood flow in that that area myofascial release real good as well um, just to get some blood flow going in the area here and ease up that tightness now here I get into uh, just some warm-up drills getting the body overall warm and here I just do some sled drags it's what's readily available at the gym so I just do some sled drags here just to warm up the whole body break a sweat so I stretched out my hips worked on my upper body a bit stretching myofascial release and now I'm just kind of going into my general strength warm up and with this you can push a sled various ways um, I can get behind it push with my arms or I can even um, pull it back but right here I like this setup just because it lets me tap into my hamstrings my glutes well so I'm planting those feet and then I'm really thinking about extending my hips with the hamstrings and glutes because I'm very uh, yeah, I have to work on my posterior chain it's something I have to build up so I kind of choose this as my general warm up and then I get to uh, I've been doing before every session uh, whether it's squat bench or deadlift I've been doing an explosive exercise just to get that neural activation start getting the muscles fired quickly you'll see I do some other stuff for that but I choose to do the chest pass with the med ball just because it resembles the bench the most so I'm taking that med ball and I'm just doing an explosive chest pass right against the wall and you see how that kind of mimics the uh, bench motion now I could do any other med ball slam here but I just choose this because I think it's a little more bench specific and you can see I get a little more explosive as I go getting that neural activation that just helps the heavier weights feel a little bit lighter some days when you just when the bar just feels real heavy to you sometimes it's just that that neural activation that you're missing you just gotta get the muscles firing properly get the motor units recruited now uh, here's a great exercise that um, I originally learned from Donnie Thompson I press out on that gray band and I just kind of twist my body around into it so you can see the band is pulling my shoulder back into the joint so I'm just kind of repositioning my shoulder back in the joint something real important to do if you're sitting at a desk all day or just any position where you're slumped over driving to this just positions that shoulder back in the joint because you never want to be benching with your shoulder and forward in the joint it's just a recipe for shoulder pain now, you don't want to have shoulder problems. Then I'll do a little bit of that, and then I'll get into my band work. Kind of doing a, um, going through a band medley here. 
spreading that band apart, trying to squeeze my shoulder blades together. You can see I spend some time just spreading that band apart, bringing it back almost like I'm racking, you know, a bar on my back for squats. You can see I'm just going through a little rotation in my shoulders, just getting movement in the shoulder joint. And then you can see I just, uh, go back and just pull those scapulas down. And I'll try to get a little lower there. And oftentimes here I can feel um, kind of my shoulder blade when it's gliding, it's almost popping, getting some cracks in my back. Opening up those vertebrae and whatnot, all that tightness just really loosens up my shoulder joint real good. Real important to do, even if I do like a watered down version of my warm up, I always have this in it. I always do some kind of band work. And you can see here I'm positioning over, I'm just gonna do some explosive presses here. So I'll do about 20 of them. The numbers are not really relevant, just as long as I'm getting some explosive work in with the band here, you know, all that neural activation I was talking about. I'm even getting that just with the bands, so I don't even if I don't get time to get to the chest pass or I have to do something quick to get into my bench uh, workout, I always use the bands here. And I'm just firing. It's a short stroke. I'm not worried much about firing through the whole way. Um, the elbow lockout. I've actually had funky elbow lately. Right here, I'm just trying to get those uh, motor units recruited and start firing quickly. Then I go into a little tricep extension. Uh, this isn't something I always did. This is something I'm doing just because of my elbow lately. Uh, I was feeling a little funky, so I've been feeling better doing some tricep extensions. Uh, just getting some blood flow in that area. And you can see I'll turn my hands down a little bit at the end and kind of push out. That's kind of that, that bench position that I'm trying to uh, work through. That's been giving me some problems. And just getting blood flow in that area, kind of pumping up the area before my workout. Black band's good enough. I don't want something too heavy. This is very light. I usually pound out about 40 of these, no problem. Higher reps get good blood flow in the area, get a good pump. So and this is just I'm just showing you a uh, beginning portion of my bench warm up. Of course, I take warm up weights and my working weight that day. But I'll just take the bar here and um, just a light setup. All I'll do is kind of pack my shoulders here. You'll see I can keep my feet up, and this is some explosive work with the bar. So getting some more explosive work going. So you can see I got three different exercises here where I'm getting explosive work in. Got the chest passes, the bands, and then I'll just take the bar and pound that out. Get those motor units recruited. Start firing quick. And then I'll go right into uh, my normal setup here. And I'll take the bar. And I always tell people I'm driving so hard with my legs here that I can, I can only probably get like three reps in before I'm totally off the bench. And you'll see that here. Um, that will conclude the video for you. Hope you enjoyed watching that. Make sure you're warming up on bench is very important um, to avoid those injuries. Make sure you're checking out bigbenches.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll see you next video.